Fantastic. I love your title, Chief Amazement Officer. That's me. We try to amaze. We try to teach how to amaze. <laughs> and you've got your so your New York Times bestseller, uh, Wall Street Journal bestseller. And the first thing I did is I went to YouTube and I watched your um, your magic your magic moment, you know, moment of misery into a moment of magic. The video with um, Frank, the cab driver. That is just fantastic. Do you want to tell me a little bit more about that experience? Because that's what it was, wasn't it? It was a wow experience. It, it was. And, and I would like to also say that wow experiences are wonderful. But at the same time, well, when I tell you, the reason that was a wow experience is because I didn't expect it to be that nice. Really, at the end of the day, the guy just was bumping up uh, the value of the, the proposition, which was a ride from downtown out to the airport. But when most people think of wow experiences, they really are over the top. The problem with wow experiences is you can't do those every day. Mm-hmm. You have to, you know, wait for something to happen, for something to respond. You know, it's you read the best customer service stories, and really what they are are reactions to moments of misery that are turned into moments of magic. Does that make sense to you? Uh, absolutely. So the uh, cab driver story, you know, basically I, I saw this cab, and I needed to go from downtown out to the airport, and the guy was kind of dressed a little shoddy, but – it turns out that as I got to know Frank over the years, that's just the way he dressed and the way he looked. You could put him in a tuxedo or a business suit, and he would still look disheveled. <laughs> he just looked that way. And uh, But what he did that was great is he just threw in these extras, the amenities, the, the value adds. And that was he had a dish of candy for his you know customers. He had uh, a newspaper for them to read and take. He picked those up at the news uh, at the hotel that had extra newspapers. He bought sodas and he kept them in his trunk and he kept them cool. And then he had a little ice bucket that he kept them in on in his car. And he gave his guests or his customers a, uh, a soda. And most importantly, which was a really amazing thing, is he sent a thank you note because we exchanged cards. He asked for my business card during the trip, said he collected the cards of the people that he would drive. And, and four days later, I got a thank you note. Well, now I've got his business card and a thank you note. Who am I going to call the next time I go back to Dallas? This guy. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. the next point I was just going to say. When you, In your book, um, The Amazement Revolution, you've talked about seven customer strategies, service strategies to create amazing customer uh, experience. And um, the fact that how he performed led to trust, confidence, and therefore loyalty. Right. You, where else are you going to go? Yeah, it's... And, and by the way, what, what was important, and you said uh, confidence. So immediately, you you know, you get into a cab, you really don't have a feeling one way or the other. You just hope for, you know, I guess if you're going to hope for anything, it's just a safe ride and a clean cab. And you get there, you give the guy a tip, you're never going to see him again. But uh, he did something extra, you know. And of course, you know, I, I didn't get all the details about what, what Frank did on this ride. But, you know, these little extras kind of added a touch where you go, you know what, this guy knows his business. I'm going to call him when I come back. And when when you do come back to any business, is it the same as the last time? So that consistency is what creates the trust. So the best companies in the world aren't over the top. They're just consistently better than average. Or maybe they're just consistently good. And, and, and they're not perfect. Nobody is perfect. There's going to be a problem or a moment of misery, as we like to call it. But the best people and the best companies understand how to fix that and make it right, not just to the point of, okay, now it's fine and it's equal, but to a point of reestablishing confidence. There's a system in place. There's, you know, when, when there's a problem and it's this particular problem, this is what we do. And we, we work to not just solve the issue or resolve the issue, but restore confidence. Absolutely. I've just read your um, one of your blog posts. It's called Amazing Customer Service Gives Competitive Edge in Any Economy. You've got a simple cartoon on there, and it, uh, there's a four characters having a customer service strategy meeting. And, and one of the guys says, we want to be amazing. And the girl answers, how do we do that? And the next guy says, simple, we just be better than average. And then the guy to the right, I think he must be the manager, he's sat at the head of the table. He <laughs> says, actually be better than average all of the time. Right. It's the all of the time that does it. Um, And that's why I believe great customer service is really within the grasp of any organization and any person because it's not about being over the top. 
Um, you know, here in the U.S., I know in the U.K. you have uh, McDonald's. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, what's the average age of the person that works in a McDonald's restaurant? Uh, 20, probably. 19. Right. Actually, you're probably younger than that. It's. Yeah. I love McDonald's. I'm not going anywhere negative with this. But typically at a McDonald's, you have young kids working or younger people working. And some of those kids, 16, 17, maybe 18 years old, what they're thinking about in their job isn't always what they should be thinking about. They're not thinking about the customer. They're thinking about what they're going to do when they get off work. I'm not saying this is at McDonald's, but I'm using is McDonald's a typical worldwide fast food quick serve restaurant. Well, what would makes the McDonald's better is if simply the person who takes your order and takes your money smiles at you and says thank you and seems to engage with you at just simply a courtesy level. And that courtesy level is enough to take them to be, you know, good or just a little better than average. Okay. But what happens is the next time I go back to that McDonald's, it's the same experience. So there is a McDonald's in, in Creve Corps where I live here in, in the U.S., St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, I go to the same McDonald's every Sunday morning for breakfast on my way. To, I play golf when I'm in town. And it's the same person, and she's so pleasant. And when she sees me, she knows it's me. She's so nice, but she's always that way with everybody. And that's the key, always, always, always. It's consistency, and that's what makes the difference. It keeps you loyal. Right. And, and, and I use cab driver, McDonald's, fast food restaurant. These are not, this is not the Ritz Carlton or the Four Seasons we're talking about here. These are what we would consider staples or uh, you know, like average, when I say staples, uh, you know, necessity, I, like McDonald's is a necessity. You absolutely have to have the Big Mac in order of fries. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, when, you know, they're the staples in our economy and our society. You know, you need a cab ride, you hail a cab. You want a quick, fast burger or you want a egg McMuffin, you go to McDonald's. They're on every other block. It's like going to Starbucks. You know, they're everywhere. So what makes that experience better? And it's usually if somebody's nice, but it's consistent. So when I go back to that McDonald's, that Starbucks, get to that same cab, is it going to be the same experience that I had before? That's it. It's that simple. I um, Your book, uh, The Amazement Revolution, was that did that come out in 2011? It did, just uh, two years ago. Uh, two years ago. And you've, um, you've got a new book on the way. Is it Amaze Every Customer? Amaze every customer can, can you, every time. Yeah, every time. I was going to ask, uh, you know, what's changed um, in the last, you know, two years? I know you've obviously shared concepts and et cetera in the, and uh, sure. tools that you've produced in the first book. Can we yeah. talk about maybe the, the way the customer's expectations have changed over the last couple of years and how your new book, uh, uh, you know, what you're going to be sharing in that? Sure. And actually, uh, the customer's expectations in general have been changing over the years. And let's address that question first, and then I'll address the differences in the book, because there are it, there, it's night and day difference. I mean, it's all new content and, and all that. And how did I come up with it? And why did I yeah, come up yeah. with it? But, but the expectation the customers have changed because they've become smarter. They've become aware of when they're getting good business. And it all started back in the 1980s, I believe, when... IBM, which to me was one of the great customer service companies, and still is, by the way, but they were the ones that kind of really put customer service on the map. They talked about, you know, we're going to deliver great service. And the way you know you're delivering a great service experience is when price becomes rest, less relevant. There, I said that right. Price becomes less relevant. They had uh, 20 features or 20, uh, I, I would call them features of the computers that they were selling and the features as they sold them were, you know, our computers are made, you know, reliable. They, uh, you can get them delivered quickly. Uh, you can get a technician on the phone almost instantly. A technician will visit you within, uh, you know, 24 hours. And, based, and by the way, our computers are priced at a certain price. What they asked their customers to do was determine what, what, what order are these most important. And after asking a bunch of customers and surveying, they found that price was less relevant. It was number 15 out of 20, which means that the faster turnaround time, the quicker response time, et cetera, et cetera, was more important than the price. So the customer is 
learning that if you are giving great service, it's worth the money. And over the years, we have been educating our consumers and our customers through advertisings, uh, through awards that we win, that, hey, we're better customer service, come and see what we're talking about. And by doing that, we create a benchmark. So even though I might be in the widget industry and you're going to buy widgets from everyone else, when you buy my widget because you're an educated customer, you might be comparing me to uh, last night's great dinner, the service that you got at the dinner restaurant the night before. Or you might be saying, boy, you know, somebody else in a completely different industry, you should be more like them. So that's where the expectations have changed. Now, my last book, The Amazement Revolution, and there's one central theme that goes through all of my books, and that is manage the moment of truth, the interaction that you have with your customer, and create a moment of magic, which is a better than average experience. So in every book, I talk a little bit about that. Always, uh, here's the catch-up chapter. If this is the first time you've read any of, of my work, this will get you up to speed. One chapter. The Amazement Revolution was seven strategies. Very conceptual. Very, there's, I mean, one, one or two more tactical, but it was an overarching uh you know, here are seven concepts. Uh, treat a, a customer like a member. We call it the membership strategy. American Express does this well. Uh, build a culture that employees feel fulfilled with. And when they feel fulfilled, they'll turn around and do even better work for your customer. Uh, so it's those types of strategies. And amaze every customer every time. I look for one company, one role model to use for the entire book. And I found this role model in Ace Hardware. Are you familiar with Ace Hardware? No, we don't have it here. I'll bet you do. You just don't realize it. They're probably uh, maybe a different under, name. Yeah, a different brand name because they own or they actually Ace has forty six hundred locations uh, in seventy different countries. Wow. Yeah, okay. and they're owned individually by entrepreneurs. Some are family owned. They might own one unit versus a, a more aggressive family might own a half a dozen, ten or twelve. And there's one or two that are that are bigger that you would almost consider a chain. But Ace is cool because they're a small business, uh, and yet at the same time, they're a large corporation, a multi-billion dollar corporation, a co-op based in Chicago, Illinois. So I found this company to be fascinating. When I tell people over here in the States, I said, you're not going to guess who I'm using as my main role model throughout the entire book. And they go, who? I go, Ace Hardware. And this is what they say. They go, really? And I go, yeah. And then they go, you know... I get it. I love my Ace Hardware store. And then they go in to tell me about their version of the story about how the person knows so much and they always have the best merchandise and the, uh, all the merchandise they want. But what was cool is that they're, they're the, they consider themselves to be the most helpful hardware store on the planet. And I'll go a step further and say they're basically the most helpful store on the planet. That's what they've operationalized. Their version of customer service is delivering helpful and they train their people and they focus on that. And they want you, when you come in and have a question, to have the answer, have the merchandise, make suggestions, et cetera, et cetera. So I started out thinking I was maybe going to get 15 or 20 really good uh, concepts that I wanted them to tie in. I, you know, I wrote the concepts, the, the new strategies or tactics that I wanted to include in the book. And I felt that Ace met all that criteria. And then... I started learning more about these retailers and how great they were. And at the end, I came up with 52 different tools. Get it? Hardware store tools. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, I get it. <laughs> yeah, but 52 very specific tools that uh, any any business of any type can use in their, their business. And by the way, I not only focused on any business, uh, so I'm going to bet that of the 52 tools, uh, 50 of them apply to virtually any business, if not all 52 but they also apply to every employee, be it a CEO of a major company or an entrepreneur that owns a, a solo, you know, they're the only one in the business. Or how about the 18-year-old kid on his first job working for, how about McDonald's or any other quick serve restaurant? All of the tactics and tools in this book are for everybody. And it was not easy to do, but I think I nailed it. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm really looking forward to it. So, so if um, anybody wants to find out, you know, more about yourself, um, where are they going to go? Wow. Well, they can go. My name is Shep Hyken, Hyken.com, H-Y-K-E-N. Yep. If they want to learn about the new book, AmazeEveryCustomer.com yep. is the new book. And, uh, you know, that'll give you some some good examples of, uh, you know, my work and what I do. And, and I like to give away a lot of content. So, 
If you go to my website, hiking.com, you can sign up for my newsletter. And it is really just that. It's an article that I write. Um, right now, I'm sending it out once a week as I'm ramping up the promotion for the new book. But I always write once a week. And you can get the blog, uh, which is the same as the article. You can click on the RSS feed uh, feature. If you're reading the blog, click on it, and it'll automatically be sent to you every week. And it's just a great article. If you're in business, share this with the, the, the people you work with. Uh, have meetings that focus around it. Also have a YouTube channel. I take every article that I write and I actually create a small short video. And we have clients, or actually they're not even clients, they're just people, companies all over the world that use these videos in their meetings. And I'm happy for them to do it. Yeah, it's um, you're quite prolific. You, you know, you've really embraced uh, technology. Well, thank you. Yeah, I, well, I think it, it's made all the difference. Um, obviously, I've reached out to several uh, people, but um, yourself uh, stand out. You know, you, you really stand out. You've done a great job. Well, thanks, Mark. Thank. You. Wait, wait, wait. Aw, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm turning red. <laughs> Give over. You know, we've got um, we've got a. It's a very vibrant industry, but it's also very competitive. You know, the restaurant business. So they say it's one of the riskiest businesses to take. So before you go, um, obviously you've embraced technology and it's you know working for you and working for your business. But I was going to ask, what kind of um, you know, is there anything you'd encourage people to take on board right now? You know, with the market changing so quickly, is there anything you'd sure. um, you'd recommend? Just if there was one thing that they really need to get on board with today. Wow, and, and 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 specifically to the world of customer service. Well, in customer service, yeah, especially for cus- for for the food industry. Oh. Are um, you talking about using technology? I'm talking about using technology. Oh, um, using technology. Okay. Uh, I mean, because I mean, on, I want to give you two answers. One, I want to just say focus on service. And uh, first, I'm going to make the assumption that a restaurant has a good menu, sure, and good food. But if you hire the right person with the right attitude, you can train them to be a good server. As a matter of fact, that's what the article I'm writing about tomorrow is about. Um, and uh, that'll come out. Yeah, Wednesday is tomorrow. So and and it, I call it the technical side, you hire somebody that has a great attitude, you still have to teach them how to properly serve. But that's easy to teach them. So I would say really focus on getting that right person because the right person can do damage control if there is a problem. It's real easy to be good when things are going well. But if the food's coming out, and it's not right, for whatever reason, damage control takes over. Now, on the technology side, or the uh, social media side, boy, there's a, a several different ways we can go. But I would say become very active in the most popular channel, which is Twitter right now. And don't just tweet marketing and advertising, you know, tweet uh, helpful. So, you know, hey, we, we've got a new special uh, on Friday nights. That's advertising. But we got a new special on Friday nights. And if you'd like to see or if you'd like to uh, get the, uh, you know, uh, instructions on how to make it, you know, they get the, you know, the ingredients so you can make it at home. Uh, that would be the recipe. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. Promoting value. And so, uh, you know, on a, on a, on a YouTube uh, channel, I think a YouTube is a great way. Have the chef at a restaurant uh, once a month, take a recipe and teach people how to cook it in five or six minutes on a YouTube video. I mean, that's that's great content. And people say, you know what? I want to go to the restaurant and try that. Yeah. You know, some people say, why do I want to give that recipe away? Now they're never going to come to the restaurant. <laughs> Wrong. They want to try it. They want to see what it's supposed to be like. Then they want to go home and make it for their friends. And then they want to go back and try another dish that the rest of restaurant has. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. I can't wait for you. But when's your book going to come out, your new book, um, uh, Amaze Every Customer? The- the book comes out in September, but here's what's cool. If you go to amazeeverycustomer.com, mm-hmm. you can actually buy the book today. And even though it doesn't come out in September, you will instantly have access to the ebook, which is available. Actually, it's, it's, uh, we're going to, every time I, I do a minor update or a correction, whenever you load it, uh, when you open up your reader, it will automatically correct. But you can get basically the book today and you can get it on your PC, Mac, or your iPad. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it's a free download that you get when you buy the book, and then you'll still get the book when it comes out in September, the hardbound book. That's fantastic. Re- just repeat that website again. AmazeEveryCustomer.com. Hey, we'll definitely promote it. I'm really quite excited. I'm 
Do you know what? I'm really excited about the whole concept of um, of the, the magazine I'm putting together here, especially with getting some great content inside of it. And one of the sections that I, um, I've i built is actually called... I forgot what I called it now. It's called... Um, the, it's a reading list, you know? And uh, inside oh, that... Recommended reading. How's that? That's, that's what it is. I've called it the reading <laughs> list because... <laughs> I've called it the reading list because what I wanted to do was I want to um, I promote the book, whatever the book is that month, and then I put comments and I put a comment box under it so people can read it with me. And then the following month, I want to talk about the book with people who've been uh, who have been reading it with me. Do you understand? Yeah. So you create a book club. Yeah. Well, it's going to be a mini book club. And it's right. Gonna, so hopefully we'll be educating people through, you know, what we present and what we put into the magazine. But also we'll have the opportunity to uh, be educated by, you know, recommended authors and finding people like yourself to come on, talk to us about their book and, and maybe give us some more insights and some more strategies about, you know, why they develop the book or why mm-hmm. they talk about. Because the book is only one modality of learning. And when you hear somebody talking about it, it gives you another one. And you right. all, you seem to learn far more by being able to hear it and being able to get a grasp of what how the author thinks. It's just I find it particularly for me anyway. It's a much better learning experience, and I want to give how that about, to our readers. <clears throat> yeah, how about to create a tweet chat around it. Are you familiar with tweet chats? Yeah, I do. You know that's an. Ex- I heard um, a podcast from was it yourself on IBM Big Data, right? And you, right. you mentioned the, the the tweet chat. I, d- I have no idea what one is. Well, basically, it's on Twitter. Every every statement you make is 140 characters or less. But you say at this particular time, let's say on on Tuesday night, May, whatever, uh, 5th of May, we're going to do a tweet chat with author Shep Hyken or whoever the author is. And you have, uh, you know, eight or 10 questions set up and you, you send this out to your community. And at eight o'clock, uh, you and I are on, and you ask the question, I do the answer, but then we get the answers from everybody else, and we have a, a little uh, tweet chat. Everything's really interactive, and after about five or six minutes, you load up the second question, just throw it out there, and um, it's a great way of creating a, a really good conversation, and all the remarks are short and pithy and you know, 140 characters or less. You have to really think about what you're going to say if you're going to make sense. So it's a really powerful way of doing it. Wow. Yeah, it does sound good. I'll have to re- do some homework. I think for now I've got a lot on my plate, but I really <laughs> I want to thank you so much for coming on. And um, I'm, what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, put promote your book out into into the magazine. Well, thank you. If you can supply me with um, a nice graphic of it. I can, I'm going to send that to you in just a few moments. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And then maybe I can uh, attach this this audio uh, to the you know, to underneath the magazine, you know, talking about uh, underneath the, the image so people can have a listen to you before they buy. Uh, that would be fantastic. Perhaps I could bring you on again at some point once um, once I've had read your book. Sure, it'd be an honor uh, if you do that. So, by the way, if you want the graphic, easiest way is just go to the website, right-click over the graphic, and you've got it. Oh, that's great. If you've given permission to use it, I'll use it. Yeah, you've got permission to use it. Hey, thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure. My pleasure, man. It's it's. I hope that we get to do it again real soon. And thanks. And as I always like to say, always be amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Take care, Mark. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye-bye.